G'day everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to make a camera obscure at home. Camera obscures are really easy to make and they're absolutely mesmerizing. It's something that's just so much fun to do. I'm not going to go too much into the history or the science of the camera obscure today, but if you want to learn more about it, it's really, really interesting and it's worthwhile having a look into. We don't need too many materials to make a camera obscura. We need some black, thick garbage bags, some tape, something to cut with such as scissors or a knife, and a bit of cardboard. We also need a nice window, hopefully with a nice view too, and it's best to do this on a bright sunny day if you can, and also to do it at the brightest part of the day. We want there to be as much light outside as possible because that's going to make it much easier to see the image once we've got our thing set up. I'm really lucky because I have a nice view of Melbourne CBD from my bedroom window, so that was the window that I chose to use to build my camera obscura. It's also useful if you get a window that's relatively small because that means there's less area that you need to cover up with the garbage bags. So there are a few simple steps to setting up a camera obscura. The first thing you want to do is black out the window. So grab your garbage bags and start taping them to the window in whichever way you see fit. You don't need to be super neat at this stage, just get them up there. And if you've got any leftover off cut bits of garbage bag, then you can use them to plug any holes if you don't quite cover it up on the first go. The aim here is to block out all the light completely, if you can. But if you've got a couple of little light leaks, don't stress too much. You can be a perfectionist, but it's really not gonna make that big a difference. Just try and cover things up as best as possible and make things as dark as you can. Once you've got your garbage bags up, you want to cut out a hole in the middle of your window. And I'd recommend one about 50 millimeters or two inches in diameter. So something around about that size. Again, you don't need to be too neat at this stage because we're going to cover this larger hole up. If you do want to, once you've cut this hole, you could actually turn the lights off and have a look at the effect. And you will notice that the camera obscura will actually start to work with a hole this big. We call this hole an aperture. And if you have turned off the lights and had a look, you notice that you've got quite a bright image, but it's also very blurry. The larger this aperture is, the brighter the image will be, but also the more blurry. And we want to create something that's a little bit sharper than what we have at the moment. Grab out your bit of cardboard, and we're gonna use this to cut some smaller apertures. I'd recommend making a couple so you can have a look at the difference between the two, and somewhere around about 10 millimeters or 3 eighths of an inch will work well for one, and 20 millimeters or 6 eighths of an inch for the other will also work well. So do a couple of these and then you can swap between the two of them. Once you've got your cardboard apertures sorted, you want to go back to the window and you want to tape the edges of your rough garbage bag hole just down against the glass. Once this is flat against the glass, grab your bits of cardboard and tape them over the top to reduce the aperture and to give you a sharper image. The last thing you wanna do is close the door to the room, turn off all the lights, and just do one last check to see if there's anywhere else that light is seeping in from. It's likely that there'll be a bit of light coming from under the door, so just stuff the crack with a towel or some clothes, they'll do the trick. That's it, it's as simple as that. You've got your camera obscura created, and now you just need to sit down and enjoy it. It'll take about 10 minutes for your eyes to fully adjust to the light, so sit somewhere comfortable and just wait patiently. And it's also best to sit facing in the opposite direction to your aperture or to the window as well, because the window can actually create a little bit of glare too and make it harder for your eyes to adjust.
You'll notice in the footage that I'm showing now that the image is reversed both on the horizontal and the vertical axis, and this is one of those scientific effects that happens when light gets squeezed through our aperture. The camera obscura is an absolutely magical effect. It's, it's just mind blowing. And everyone that I've shown one to has been absolutely amazed that this has happened. I hope you've enjoyed the video and that you're able to go out and enjoy this simple process at home. It's one of those things that I think that everyone should experience at least once in their lifetimes. On the next video, I'm gonna be talking about how to make a camera out of a magnifying glass and a flatbed scanner. So if you'd like to learn how to do that, make sure you subscribe and you tag along for the journey. If you got something out of this video, it'd be great if you could hit the like button, I'd really appreciate it. And if you have any questions or you'd like to learn a bit more about the camera obscura, pop a comment down and I'll try and help you out as best I can. I'll see you on the next video, have a good one.